Now, political science lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Dr. Kwesia Machi Boating, has joined us via phone uh, for more on that. Doc, thank you for your time. Good afternoon to you and you're welcome. So, um, how did it look to you? I'm sure you probably watched it, watched it on TV. Um, the both house sides of the house appearing early hours of the day, uh, making sure that they grabbed, they were first to grab the seats on the majority side and the drama that ensued, um, some much activities we saw on the floor and uh, eventually Afenio Markin leading his team out of the house until the speaker says otherwise. Uh, what do you make of all that happening in the morning? Thanks for having, uh, having me. I teach uh, political science. I saw some of the basic explanations given to the concept manifest today. Essentially, that politics rests on uh, the phenomenon of conflict cooperation, consensus, accommodation. But then societies always try hard to play down the conflicts. They don't really manifest in a physical fashion as we have been seeing in our parliaments. At times when they walk out, you see conflict manifest physically. And this one is a very special, you know, if you like, demonstration of a political conflict. So as a teacher of uh, political science, I'm not necessarily taken aback. Um, I'm only seeing it in, in, in a heightened fashion. Yeah. I, I, may I ask, um, you know, as a, a, a political science lecturer, do you see this? I know that people are, you know, we are harboring the fear of how it can throw our democracy out of control. But is this also a test of the democracy haven't risen to this height? Obviously, that is the way I see uh, politics strengthening our institutions, for that matter, the constitution, uh, or if you like, a provision in the constitution, and then the constitution also affecting the politics. You know, going forward, if you have any such development, definitely what will unfold, you know, uh, should be different from what we're seeing now. We've not been here before. Mm -hmm. And so we are here now. Nothing is going to get out of hand. The political procedures, the processes will sort themselves out very soon. As everybody has been saying, we are all waiting for the speaker to react to the issue. Uh, the three arms of government have got to function the way they have got to function. And then the politics will have to unfold. The ball is now squarely in the court of the speaker. He can't run away from it. Uh, fortunately, the speaker is a lawyer, a seasoned lawyer, someone who has been in the parliament for a long time. And so he's going to have to react to the issue. It is rest assuring that the two sides are all waiting for the speaker to relate to the issue. And so to me, there's nothing untoward happening. It's only that we, we see in the politics manifest in a much more physical, confrontational way. Now, what do you think? Uh, you think that it was right for the minority to take the decision it did um, by, you know, exiting the house and left it for the NDC side of the house until the speaker showed up. Was that uh, quite a smart decision to have taken? It is a decision they have taken, and I think we need to respect that because there's no need for anyone to be physical, mm -hmm. you know, in order to occupy a particular space. At, at the parliament house. There's no need for anyone to go and push any other person out of a particular seat or not. When, when at, the, at the end of the day, everything boils down to what the speaker comes out with. And I think that is what, what we should all be looking at. So yes, they decided to react to the situation that way. And I think it is on, only proper. But it doesn't mean that the conflict is not you know, uh, in place and it's not still waging. It is. Not until the speaker speaks, we will still be in that conflictual situation. What about the sight of the military in the House? We seem to be very comfortable with that uh, practice, where we saw it during the election of the Speaker of Parliament in the beginning of his ruling, or I mean of his parliament. And then uh, today we saw it again with the presence of the military. Is it a, a practice that should be encouraged? Why not the police? Is this 
uh, disputes or misunderstanding beyond the capacity of the police to ensure peace? Some people in the executive are G3. There are some members of the executive who are G3. Their actions are what we are witnessing. It is simply unwarranted. The military, as at now, has no business there. there. Nothing has gotten out of hand which is beyond the capacity of the police to handle such that we should bring in the military. And even with the police, political scientists are wary of the use of the police in a political way. Because you don't just use the police. In some cases, you know, members of the executive use the police in a political way, in a way to, you know, use their presence, their physical presence, their power to cow down, if you like, sentiments that could come from the, you know, uh, uh, other members of the political divide. So going ahead to deploy the military is unwarranted. It, it, it is not to be encouraged. And whoever is doing that has an explanation, you know, for the people of Ghana. We are not there. Some people are unnecessarily G3 and, and they rush to send in the police. They rush to send in the military. Here in Kumasi some time ago, they sent members of the military to a girl's senior high school ostensibly to, uh, you know, I mean, to stop them from going on demonstration. There are some people who should not actually be in the executive. They don't understand the powers given them. All right. Uh, Dr. Kwesi Amache Watin, we're grateful for your time. And he's a political lecturer there uh, giving us his thoughts on these updates. What's